Across the board, leading manufacturing companies have goals to be net zero, near zero, or carbon neutral by 2050 or even earlier. To contribute to these overall goals, teams can use energy modeling in SEEK to enable continuous improvement efforts and systematically reduce energy consumption system-wide. Using energy modeling in SEEK, Allnex was able to reduce their energy consumption and ultimately greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to 1,095 passenger vehicles driven for one year. To learn more about this, check out the link in the description. We are currently viewing a SEEK Organizer Topic dashboard where we have organized the key visuals, KPIs, and actions associated with a similar energy reduction effort. Each of these visuals is linked back to the workbench analysis where it was created. Let's examine this energy modeling analysis on an example dataset to demonstrate how we can create energy models in SEEK and track improvements over time. Here, in SEEK Workbench Analysis, you can see an energy model for the total steam going into a system. This is the time prior to making changes, indicated by the pink bar in the middle, and here's the time where the team started the focused energy reduction efforts, indicated by the teal bar. Over these last several months, we can see energy has been reduced significantly, up to 15%, and because we are comparing this to the energy model as a baseline, this is controlling for factors like ambient temperature. So we know that energy reductions are reflective of overall energy reduction in the system. To show how this was done in Seek, we will use the Seek journal feature, where we have saved the different steps of the analysis in links. The journal feature is an important part of knowledge capture and knowledge share in Seek because it allows users to easily document each of the important steps in the analysis so it can be shared within teams and across the organization, and others can understand the method, calculations, and assumptions. First, I will start from the beginning where we brought in the raw data needed for the analysis. Here you can see I have the total steam from line one on the trend. To add more data, I will navigate to the data tab where I can access data from any of the connected data sources by searching for the name of the tag and adding them to the trend. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see all the data sources Seek is connected to, including process historians, LIMS databases for quality data, cloud historians, and more. We can easily access any of our connected data to add context and use it in this analysis. To see the full list of supported data sources, check out the link in the description. Next, we will cleanse the data. We have several tags that are strings, indicating open and closed, or on and off, that we need to convert to numeric values, zero or one, to use them in the regression model. Here you can see the new signals I have created in Seek using numeric values. Next, we want to identify uptime in the system so we can create a model based on when we have steam flow and disregard times when the steam is shut off. To find uptime, we can use a point and click tool to identify when the steam flow is greater than zero. We have many different tools we can use in Seek to identify time periods of interest, quantify key KPIs, cleanse data, model and predict, import and export data, and use formulas to do simple math or use our library of powerful functions. Here, I will use one of the identify tools to find when the total steam is greater than zero. Once I execute this, you will see a series of bars at the top of the screen. These bars are called capsules in Seek, and each of these capsules identifies a time period of interest. All of these individual capsules together make up a condition in Seek. Now that we have cleansed the data and identified uptime, we will build the model. You can see in the second lane the predicted steam based on the steam inputs. We have used a simple point and click tool to model the total steam, added all the signals as inputs, and restricted it to train only during uptimes. We can view the model outputs, including the coefficients and their associated p-values, as well as the intercept and r-squared. We can also use these coefficients to quickly identify bad actors. For example, for our steam flows, we would expect the coefficients to be close to 1, because as the flow rate from one of the steam flows increases by 1, we expect the total steam flow to also increase by 1. If these coefficients are far from expected or designed values, this may be a good place to start focusing improvements. We can also check the model fit using a scatter plot and a trend line to visually verify how the model is predicting the actual steam used over the training period. 
Now that we have created the model, we can use the regression coefficients to inform continuous improvement efforts, then measure the impact on the total steam consumption. Here we can see month by month how much energy we are using versus the model, with an up to 15% decrease in energy consumption. We can continue to model energy reduction efforts in near real time with the organizer topic dashboard, and if we ever need to retrain the model, we can easily update the training window in Seek Workbench.